Hello everybody, thank you so much for coming back to my channel. I'm Riley, you may know me as Honey Rags. I'm gonna do a thrift with me. I have a puppy in my hand because a few of you on Instagram asked if I could include her in some of my videos. Um, so my YouTube subscribers, most of you guys haven't met Wanda. She is a Basset Hound and she is eight weeks old today. She had her first vet appointment and she's super healthy. Look at that belly, look at that big belly. Um, so I'm going to go bring her back inside and then let's run to the thrift and see what I find to resell. So you guys don't know it yet, but um, I actually ended up walking into this Goodwill six minutes before they closed. Long story that I'm going to explain in a bit. I did not have time to go through the clothing, so I figured I would go through the hard goods and film it quickly because I can obviously go through more items that way. I did end up going to another Goodwill, so that's why the video is not four minutes long. Um, this was just the very first stop, and I actually didn't walk out with anything. There wasn't anything great. I'm just kind of looking through the glasses. Looking back at this video now, these three glasses right here in these three different deep colors, I really regret not getting because they had just a little bit of iridescence, which I really like. And I love lowball glasses, so I kind of wish I would have bought those. Uh, unfortunately, they were not vintage so i kind of would have my hands tied as to which platform i sell them on ebay obviously you could sell them on ebay but there are so many sets of glasses on ebay i mean just tens of thousands so your chances of a customer finding your set and wanting to purchase them are lower um so i couldn't list them on etsy or else i would have probably picked them up well my whole day's ruined um, this Goodwill added temporary hours, not due to COVID, due to short staffing. And they used to close at 8, and now they close at 6, and I walked in at 5.54, and I wanted to throw up. Because you know when you have, like, a really good feeling about, like, one specific thrift shop that you haven't been to in a while? I had that feeling. I didn't even get to look through the clothing. I went really quickly through the hard goods. But I'm not, I gotta find another Goodwill that I haven't been to in a while. I'm thinking... Um, but I'm going to continue this video at a different Goodwill that I haven't been to in about two weeks, but I don't think I've ever filmed this specific Goodwill on video. So let's go to this one. I'm cutting in again. For those of you who just want to get to the thrift with me video um, and don't want to hear me vent because I'm just going to vent for like 45 seconds, just skip ahead like one minute. Um, so like big deal, whoopity ding. It's not the end of the world, but I was looking forward to this all day. I waited all day to go because I have kids and I wanted to go without kids. And I drove 25 minutes from my home with ding But here's the problem. The other Goodwill that I haven't been to in like two weeks is 15 minutes from my home in the opposite direction. So 25, 15, so 40 minutes. So 25 minutes there, and then so 40 minutes back and forth. Like by the time I get to this next Goodwill, they're probably gonna be close to closing. So anyway, I'm depressed and I'm getting myself some fried cheese curds and an olive burger to make myself feel better, which is taking even more time off. You guys, I can't, I can't make this up. They are out of fried cheese curds. They've never, they've never been out of fried cheese curd. You know what? I feel like this is a bad omen that I should not be thrifting today. Well, I mean, cheese curds aren't really related, but I don't know. I just feel like I'm not going to find anything. You guys know when, um, like you can't finish going through a thrift shop and you just, you convince yourself that there's like a Johnny was jacket there. And, and I, I never, I've only found like two Johnny was ever in my whole life, but I, I convinced myself that I, I'm missing out on something huge. I just can't stop thinking about it. Almost every time I go into a Goodwill that I haven't been to in a while, there's a new set of porcelain dolls that looked like somebody collected them and they tried to keep them in the box. Uh, I remember when everybody was buying those and thought they were going to be worth a lot of money someday. And there's just, there's just too many of them and they're not really worth picking up. I thought this little salt and pepper shaker was so cute. So this is a little grandpa with a pea. If this would have had the grandma with it, because obviously it was a set, so I'm guessing there was a grandma, I probably would have bought it. It looks like one of those um, made in Japan collectibles. Uh, this caught my attention, but then I flipped it over and I saw that, that old residue from a made in China sticker. Everybody knows what those look like. So I ended up putting it back. These little Hummel figurines, are these Hummel? I don't know. Um, someone can correct me on that if those are Hummel or not. Either way, I don't know enough about them to pick them up. I thought this was really cute too. Somebody looks, it looked like somebody had a quirky little collection of like old people figurines. 
<laughs> this is cute. It's a little Wishkins hair fairy. Um, I did end up looking up the comps on that because it was made by Doug Harris. And sometimes if you have like uh, figures that have the artist's name on them, they can be more collectible. I looked it up and I found that exact same one sold on eBay around $18. So it wasn't really worth it for me. If it would have been 25 or more, I probably would have picked it up because it was really cute. This is a cute little incense holder. It looks like it was hand painted. Going down the next aisle, this cute little aqua blue, not even aqua blue, like more of a baby soft pastel blue ceramic box caught my attention. And then I looked on the bottom and it, it kind of just, it's chunky and it seems like it was made in the 70s. The reason I'm dating that from the 70s is because there was a Victorian revival, like crazy re Victorian revival uh, in the 70s and that looks like it was made to look older than what it actually is. It was really cute but the flowers were not hand painted. It looked like they were um, like uh, stamped on because they were all the exact same. This is a cute little wooden figurine which I used to pick up. I don't really pick them up anymore because they're just they're hard to move unless they have a signature at the bottom that is worth something. I thought this was cute. Uh, so this is a little wall decoration and I turned it around and it says Society 6. So it, I looked it up and the comps were okay on Society6 home decor. Uh, I saw a lot of pillows and stuff that sold. So I'm going to try to move it around $20 on eBay with free shipping. But I mean, I can easily ship that first class. The shoes were not very good. I actually didn't bring home a single pair of shoes this time. As you guys can see, a lot of Clarks, a lot of... Uh, pay less brand shoes like usual. Funny enough, my best shoe hauls are from the Goodwill bins. And I don't know why that is because a lot of times when I find good shoes from the Goodwill bins, they will have really reasonable prices written on the bottom. And clearly they didn't sell in store for those prices. So I don't know what's up with that, but I'm not complaining. <laughs> I found a lot of solid color t-shirts that were in pretty good uh, that were pretty good brands this time around, like that Club Monaco top you just saw. Club Monaco is a brand that I would normally pick up had it been patterned or a different piece. Obviously, a plain black shirt isn't going to cut it. Uh, just like this logo by Lori Goldstein piece, it was just a little bit too plain. Uh, if that would have been like a heavier sweater or if that would have been just a, the tunic tank top that it was, but I would have found it at the bins, I would have probably picked it up because it is one of my... Uh, bread and butter brands that I rely on for consistency. So this is a reformation blouse. This is my first time finding reformation and it was just a plain black top. So it hurt to leave behind, but there's, there's just not much I could get out of that. You can walk into Old Navy and get a plain black shirt in the same, you know, material for like $6. So I just couldn't bring that one home with me. I did take a gamble and I ended up bringing home this first uh, buy junk food piece. I like the lightning bolts. It reminds me of like ACDC uh, Thunderstruck. This is another junk food piece. This is junk food for Target, I think. I did end up leaving that one behind. Junk food is a brand, and this one was new with tags too. Uh, junk food is a brand that five years ago when I first started reselling, I used to get excited to find certain pieces that were, I guess, rare or harder to find could bring in some good money but it's just gone down in value so much. It's really not worth picking up most of the time. Here's what I have in my cart so far that I did not get on film. Uh, that Athleta tie-dye dress, that's a newer label Athleta. I probably can move that around $24. This Torrid dress, I really like. I find a lot of Torrid. Don't Usually don't pick it up, but that piece was really nice. 24 of 52 conversations. This is an anthropology brand that I have never found before. It is silk and you guys know I like selling brands, especially anthropology brands that I've never sold before. So I haven't looked up comps, which is kind of a gamble, but I'm guessing around 20 to 24. This is soft joie. So I always say in my head when I'm reading the tag soft joie, but it's joie. It's just a plain black cotton blazer, probably moved around 20 to $22 on Poshmark. Um, a little bit of an older label pair of Athleta pants, but those still sell around $20 for me on Poshmark. This is a cute little Holding Horses dress. Uh, Holding Horses is another brand that it's kind of lost some of its resale value, but I still pick it up sometimes. This is a Toad & Co dress, formerly known as Horny Toad. 
It's more of a compression fit, so I think I'll be able to get about, about $25 for it. This is a 1980s bright green Oscar de la Renta dress with the shoulder pads. Honestly, probably going to cut out the shoulder pads. I know some people have mixed feelings about that, but I usually cut out the shoulder pads. I'm not going to lie. This was a cute wool hat that didn't have a brand name, but I really like the music note cutout, so I'm going to try to move that on Poshmark around 20 Skunk Funk, this is a really good brand to pick up. Definitely depending on the piece like always, but Skunk Funk sells for me between $20 and $30 depending on the piece. These are a pair of Nua Tags Matilda Jane pants with, I wouldn't have picked these up had it not been for the embroidery down this one leg that I really like. I do want to look up the style on these, but I'm guessing between $20 and $26 because they're new. Uh, this is a pair of nice pattern Prana pants, probably around $20 bucks because they're not anything special. YFB. This is Young, Fabulous, and Broke, which I didn't know until I actually, I had to look these up because they seemed nice. And I was like, what's this brand? Young, Fabulous, and Broke, which is a good brand to pick up. Tory Burch Jeans, M-O-I. have no idea what that means. Maybe it's a collaboration. Either way, always pick up Tory Burch. I was excited to find those. Going back through the clothing for my second round, uh, you know, and this is an L-O-L-E piece, which I also pick up sometimes, but that one was a little bit too plain for my liking. Um, Club Monaco silk and sequin top, definitely a good find. So in hindsight, even though I was really disappointed that that first Goodwill was closed, that I was really excited about going through, it was probably meant to be because I did find, you know, I had a pretty good haul, as you guys can see, at this Goodwill, which I would have not gone to had the other one been open. This is another brand I don't hear a lot of people talking about in the reseller community, Cooley Bar. I have no idea if I'm saying that right. C-O-O-L-I-B-A-R, all one word. Definitely a good brand to pick up. I do not want to give you guys an estimate because I don't know what I'm going to sell that for, but I do know it's a good brand. Um, Left of Center, that's that one piece that I just showed you guys. I know it's a really plain mustard colored top, but I it's one of those brands that some people will buy the plain colors just because of the brand, which I probably could have said about that reformation top, but this one was a little bit nicer than that. Joseph Ribkoff, another brand that technically is high end, but can't really get that much out of it. I do leave behind about half the pieces that I find, but I liked that one because of the zip up front. Cloth and stone piece. I'm finally getting over my weakness where I feel like I have to pick up every cloth and stone piece because I'm just, I can't sell them. And I used to be really stubborn and I kept picking them up. I mean, even just a few months ago, I was picking up cloth and stone pieces just because I didn't want them to end up in a landfill. And I just, I'm like, I got to cut some corners here. I have to be smart. I'm finding too many of them. This is a CP Shades top. It was really hard to show you guys the label. I don't think, I mean, if you guys want to rewind to get a better look at that label. I also picked up a Sioni piece. This one right behind, right here, the Sioni jacket. Uh, I definitely wouldn't pick up their pieces unless it's a really heavy knit jacket because their pieces don't go for much, but for some reason I can get about $25 to $30 out of their jacket. As you can see, I left that North Face piece behind. I find too many. I am going to show you guys the rest of my haul in the car because I realized I didn't have enough time to like film and like get my stuff. And it was it turned into a really good haul because I was really disappointed at first. So I was like, I'm just going to stop filming for now and show you guys when I get out to my car. I did. I know you guys want me to get to the point, but I did. Um, I thought of something when I was in there because the manager, the store manager was actually there and she knows who I am. A lot of people on YouTube and Instagram um, tell resellers like myself and other ones who um, tell you guys what brands to look for. A lot of you guys say a lot of people, I shouldn't say you guys, a lot of people say you're ruining it for the rest of us because, you know, Goodwill's going to see that you're reselling these brands and they're going to start marking them up. Um, funny thing is, this is one of my best spots to go to and the store managers know who I am. They actually even know my username, which some of you guys are like, why would you give them that information? But the way they've explained it to me before is that the Goodwill's around me, they're more interested in having a lot of inventory and moving it quickly rather than sitting on pieces because they marked them up too high. So I did want to throw that out there because it kind of like I was thinking and I'm like, you know what, I'm going to I'm going to tell these people um how it really is, at least around my area. So I found this um We the Free 
tunic tube top. Um, we the Free is a lot, a, a lot of people pass on the brand We the Free. Um, it's Free People's Lower Line, and I do pick it up on occasion. I picked up about half the pieces that I found today because there was like a huge We the Free haul. I picked up this piece. These were all $3.99. This is another tunic. Um, you know, I don't always pick it up, like I said, but I picked up the pieces that I like the best. I can move them around $20. This is a Free People thermal thing. This is a little bit older, but it has the bell sleeves. Um, these ones sell around $25 for me. Um, I just call them like flare sleeve thermals and they, they sell on eBay. Um, I did end up picking up one North Face, even though there was a few pieces that I passed on, but this one, it's like a nice, um, hoodie. I found two Patagonia pieces for $3.99. These are pretty much base layers, a baby blue one and a gray one. I can't find the gray one. I found a few soft surroundings pieces. This is a soft surroundings wool. This is a soft surroundings button up. Normally I wouldn't pick this up because it's a solid color, but it's actually a button up tunic. Um, I found a woman's mountain hardware uh, base layer. These sell for about $18 for me. So, you know, the profit is smaller, but it adds up. You figure I make $10 a piece on each thing that I just showed you guys after fees and shipping. And what I paid, even if I'm only making like eight to nine dollars a piece, like that's what, like a hundred dollars right there that I just showed you guys. Maybe I don't know how many pieces I've showed you. Found a lot of Madewell pieces. I picked up almost all of them. These are all in the same size too, so I think these were dropped off with the free people because they're all medium. Um, this one is a slouchy Madewell top, so pretty plain. I wouldn't normally pick it up, but it does have the like slouchy oversized fit. I found some really slick soft surroundings. This is an older label, but soft surroundings pants sell pretty well for me. Um, and I found, what is this? Oh, this is a Madewell cashmere blend mock neck sweater. And uh, this one I almost put back. It's just a plain Madewell piece, but it has like an asymmetric front. So I'm like, it's unique enough with that asymmetric front. I'm getting to the bottom, guys. I'm getting close. This is another We The Free, so I love mustard yellow. I did pick this one up. It's more of a tunic. Um, I'm a sucker for mustard yellow. I picked up this Prana. You guys know what a Prana label looks like, right? I think I already showed you one, but I'm gonna show you again, because I know some of you are like, keep the label images in your mind better than the brand name. Prana, this is a hooded, this is actually a hooded um, tunic. And this is the other Patagonia piece. There are a couple of pieces down here that fell down, so I'm not... Am I going to show you guys? Yeah, I am. Um, this is found so much logo by Lori Goldstein, which is a brand that I always swear by, but every single piece was super plain. This one I picked up because it's just a really cute, um, like, weaver cardigan. And this is a Patagonia base layer. Um, so one last thing I want to touch up on while I'm here, which I should probably save for another YouTube video, which I actually, I'm sure I will because a lot of people like those kind of like tips videos. Um, you probably noticed most of what I found was pretty much like long sleeve stuff you would wear in the colder seasons. We're going into summer in Michigan right now. Um, my biggest, my biggest time for sales is between the end of July because people start thinking about fall and the end of July. Um, I know it sounds crazy, but in Michigan we do. Um, the end of July to about the end of March, beginning of beginning of April, um, those are my best sales months because the majority of what I find that's worthy of reselling is long sleeve. Um, a lot of the short sleeve pieces that I find are basic. Um, I don't know what it is in the four years, five years that I've been reselling now. I just, I have trouble um, finding a lot of summer stuff except for dresses. I have trouble finding good shorts. I have trouble finding good blouses. I don't know why that is. I think a lot of it is because I live in Michigan and our colder season is like nine months out of the year and we only get like three months where we can wear short sleeve. So most people have a more extensive winter and fall and spring wardrobe than they do summer. Um, I can't believe I just fit all that within six minutes. So I'm proud of myself. I had a pretty good haul. I spent $180 total. Um, I have a like two huge garbage bag size, garbage bags full size bags. <laughs> um, that didn't come out right. But anyway, um, as you guys can see, 
pretty good haul. I hope you guys enjoyed my thrift with me. Keep your eye out for some tip videos in the future. Those ones always get a lot of positive responses. So I'm going to try to get more of those out. Uh, I'm going to leave a link down below in the description to my Instagram, honey.rags. From there, there's a link to my website. You can uh, go follow me on Facebook or like me on Facebook because I have an embarrassingly low amount of people who follow me on Facebook, which like, I don't have a, like, I don't have a big head about it. I don't want to be that person that's like, like, but it's a huge contrast. I think I have like 600 people who follow me on Facebook. So it's like, I barely post there because like I can reach out to more people on Instagram and YouTube. So, you know, thank you so much for watching if you made it this far. I love you. Happy selling, happy thrifting, and stay safe.